Hello, it's me, Kyle. Welcome back to the behind the scenes vlog. Building a startup, uh, and that startup is Triumph Debt AI, and I am Kyle Duck, your founder and CEO. Today, your founder and CEO. Today, we're going to be talking about a concept called anti marketing. Now, this is a concept that I just made up. At least I've never seen anybody else talk about it directly. And what anti-marketing, what it means, uh, how I define it is that it's the opposite of best practices. Now, best practices, they're in every industry you have these kind of ideas of best practices. And that's, I guess you would say that's like the standard that you're supposed to adhere to, what the, the ideal um, execution of whatever task it is that you're doing. Now, in practice... Think of best practices, it's like the textbook version of how, of how what you're doing is supposed to be executed. So what happens in practice is you have this standard and all the practitioners in that industry, if the, the vast majority of them follow that standard. So what happens is that best practices becomes average. And if you're building a business, you know, uh, early on, you know, the average business fails. So you can't really afford to be average. Well, I mean, that's true in almost anything in life. You don't want to be average. So uh, to illustrate, let me better, better illustrate this with online. What I did is I went to this website called betalist.com. You can see right here. Um, it's kind of a curated list of trending startups or uh, newly launched startups. And I just clicked on some, just some random startups. They had the updated daily. And you can see here, here's one called Homeflow. Just take a look right here, like what they're doing at the aesthetics. They're grabbing your name. They're grabbing your email. Uh, here's another one right here. Uh, don't yeah also grabbing your uh, part of the screen blocked here again they're they're grab you know it's kind of similar aesthetics in a way um, similar color schemes also just asking for the email right here again are you sensing a trend we have this blue text uh, our blue background with uh, kind of soft hues or more cartoonish hues again asking for email with white text um, here's another one Here's another one with a very similar aesthetic, again and again. This one's slightly different, but still kind of same thing. Um, asking for the email about the business, asking for the email, blah, blah, blah. And, and like, I don't know about you guys, but I couldn't tell you the difference. But I couldn't tell you what these things do. Uh, and you can't even really tell the distant difference between them aesthetically. They all look very similar. And, and the thing is that... Yes, the best practice is getting the email on the home page and having the certain color scheme and design, I, I reckon. Um, but none of these none of these designs, none of these businesses are standing out, right? They all look the same. Um, <clears throat> so the reason this is a problem is that when people when people are online, when they're, when they're surfing the internet, when they're coming across, they're, you know, going to different sites and going to different social media, your mind actually enters this kind of like haze. Like it's called surfing the web for a reason. <clears throat> people are very zoned out uh, when they're just kind of clicking on random sites and reading things. Not only that, but there are like millions or, or billions of uh, web pages, videos, social media posts competing for the attention of the person you're trying to reach. So... Anytime in marketing, the first step that you have to do, the first thing you're responsible for is getting them to stop what they're doing and slow down and pay attention and, and notice you or notice your business, right? On this whole list of sites that we just saw, arguably, unless, unless somebody is very primed to, to know uh, from how they arrived at that site to, to learn about it, your mind just kind of skips over it because you see a thousand startups like that every week and it doesn't necessarily stand out. I first understood this concept from uh, from Nassim Taleb. I don't know if you're familiar with him. I, mean, I think I talked about him in a recent video, which is no accident. I'll be talking about him a lot, and I'll link to him below. Uh, Nassim Taleb is the author of Anti-Fragile, The Black Swine. Um, he has a whole collection of books called The Incerto, and is, a, I guess you would call him a philosopher, a financial trader. Um, he's a very, very influential scholar, uh, among other things. And he talks, and I've heard him talk about, he's also a counterintuitive thinker. When he gives, like, you know, as a, as a, as a public intellectual, he's often asked to give speeches and, you know, graduation addresses and this sort of thing. Now, the best, the best practice when you're giving a speech is to talk loudly and clearly and enunciate. Uh, what Nassim does is he talks in a very low tone, almost a whisper if he could. Of course, he has a microphone. 
And the reason he says to do this is because it forces people to pay closer, closer attention to his words, to even hear him. Whereas with the best practices, with the uh, loud and clear speaker, you just, it becomes noise. And you lose focus because you're, done, you're not having to strain your, 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 your mind to, to, to focus and think about it. Um, I have another, exa I have a ex great example of this from, from online marketing. This is a site that I've loved for years called linkscars.com. Um, if you can see, like the, the whole web design and aesthetic is the complete opposite or completely different from virtually everything else online. And uh, it's, it's based in the UK and it's been in business for years. And I think they're doing, uh, doing quite well. They've been online for some time and have kept the same aesthetic right here. It says 2006, she leased more than uh, 85 million pounds in cars. Like there's even this god awful music um, that I'm not going to play. She has a live webcam in the office. I think at one point they had like chickens and the chicken webcam in the office. They have just all sorts of, of awful stuff going on. These bright abrasive colors. But if you're searching for, for car rentals, for, for car leases in the UK and uh, you come upon her site, you will stay there and you will read it. And it's so different and it stands out so much from the pack that... It's almost obvious as a customer or client that for that to be so different, that she must be successful for her to be so different from all the others. So there's almost like an ingrained, ingrained trust and ingrained social proof in being willing to so stand out from the crowd like she's doing with her design. Now, there's one more um, example I wanted to show from a guy named Sam Hyde, who's a creator. He's a comedian, a sketch artist, filmmaker. Uh, creator made a TV show that was on Adult Swim, got great ratings, so it got canceled last year called World Peace, Million Dollar Extreme Presents World Peace. Uh, he does a lot of stuff on YouTube, but it's spread out through like, so he has a YouTube present, but it's spread out through like 10 different channels. There's nothing concentrated. It's hard to even like find examples to show because his whole online presence, presence is, is like vapor. Uh, you can't pin down exactly where he is on the different social media platforms. But if you look at these video accounts, they're all 90,000, 80,000. All of his videos, he has tens of thousands. Uh, on this one channel, he has 30,000 subscribers. On, on this other channel from the show, 100,000 subscribers. This TV show had you know, a million plus viewers in the middle of the night. Uh, you can look right here on the side. These are all other channels that, that, that he runs as well. Or most of them that he runs are the uh, other guys in his team run. So it's the complete opposite of the way most YouTubers work where they concentrate on one channel and they have this like very centralized presence. Uh, everything seems official and eyes are dotted and T's crossed and that sort of fun thing. But he has a fiercely loyal uh, following in the tens of thousands and you know, makes his living off of uh, making crazy YouTube videos. He also does funny, funny little things like uh, doing YouTube videos like with his iPhone in vertical um, with like a with a in the vertical mode, which is of course a big no no when you're making videos. I was trying to load it, but my, I need a new laptop, guys. My laptop is too slow to uh, record videos and get YouTube and all this going at the same time. <clears throat> I'll add that to the to do list. Uh, they do other funny things like having just completely uh, off the wall titles to videos that don't make any sense. They don't, uh, you know, just hey. turning. Now the audio is playing. Inserting random... Uh, I'm living in my car for the last few days. Turn that off. Please Please Just inserting random numbers and letters in the titles and, and not using clickbait. Uh, not using clickbait, what's it called? Little avatars or preview images. And it's just the complete opposite of best practices. But they're highly super successful. So I've been thinking a lot about these concepts, about this anti-marketing and how to... Uh, you know, figuring out ways to apply it to Triumph to my business. Like, for instance, yesterday I was working on a new uh, kind of splash design for the website. Uh, and I'm a startup. And if you'll notice, what I'm, the aesthetic I'm going for, I'm not entirely pleased with it yet. It's going to be this is, you know, like early, 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 not even beta, alpha days, is uh, I right here, this like cloud and this cloud with the Brandenburg Gate statue. Um, and also, if you'll notice, there's no like immediate headline or button to click on so like those other startups everything there was like the headline with the call to action and all that i'm trying to avoid that and the point is that i really want to stop people's attention when they come on the site and get them to poke around and invest invest in learning about what we're about 
rather than just having it be an immediate obvious payoff. So the only two, uh, and there's actually I need to clean up and get rid of the scroll bar right here in the footer. Uh, but the only two links I have are right here. The uh, and this is for the this enterprise sales page and the small business sell page, and of course the sign in uh, sign in link for the existing customers. Um, but they're not like obvious links. I'm not calling attention to them. You really have to stop and focus and look around to even uh, to even see those. So the good thing is it's like really uh, theoretically we'll see how it, you know see how it works out with testing. But it's forcing people to stop in their tracks and and think and make decisions. And so. There's there's a there's a there's a concept as well in psychology that when you when you when you get people I'm asking I'm making people make very very small investments of their time and energy in the site right from the get go and there's a concept in psychology and persuasion that when you make an investment in something you are more likely to hold that thing in high regard that's um, you know if you buy a car if you buy a Ferrari for a hundred thousand versus uh, you know two thousand for a Hyundai. Okay, of course it's a Ferrari, so you'll love it even more. But you're more likely when you invest in more things, you're more likely to overlook flaws. When you invest highly in things, you're more likely to uh, overlook flaws in them, and to it's just like a cognitive bias. So the more you give to something, the more you will value it. So in a way, I'm trying to take advantage of that, uh, or use that cognitive use that cognitive bias uh, in my marketing by kind of forcing people to stop and pay attention and think and look around at what they're doing when they land on the site. So that's the plan. It's a work in progress. We'll see how it uh, how it works out. You know, you might come back to the site when you may be watching this video months or years from now, and decide you come back and it looks like every other startup. Hey, if it works, it works. You know, the, uh, we got to go with uh, with what it is that, that moves the dial and pays the bills and makes some money around here. But that's the idea, and that's why the site's designed the way it is right now. And it might change, but hey, uh, hopefully at the very least, if you're building a startup or business, maybe it gives you an idea. Uh, or something to think about. I'll, I'll link to the to the other channels and the other, the other people I talked about in the comments. Thanks for watching. Cheers. Have a good day. Peace.